A part one is asking us to plot the circles on the Cartesian plane below. They're giving us two circles, C1 and C2, and in order to plot them, we need to find their centers and we need to find their radius. In order to do that, we're going to use the log tables um, on page 19. You can see down the bottom here where it, uh, where it gives us the equation of the circle, and from that we can find the center and the radius. So that's where we're going to be taking the information from, page 19 in the logs. So starting with the circle C1, let's find the uh, center. So the center is given by 2g of x is equal to minus 8. So I'm taking the uh, coefficient, the number in front of the x from circle 1. So 2gx is equal to minus 8. I can cancel the two x's on either side. So I'm left with 2g is equal to minus 8. Dividing across by 2, I'm leaving myself with g is equal to minus 4. And if I multiply across by a minus 1 or change the signs, I get minus g is equal to 4. I'm now going to find minus f. So same principle again. So I'm going 2fy is equal to minus 4y. That's the number in front of the y this time. Uh, dividing across by y leaves me with 2f is equal to minus 4. Dividing across by 2, f is equal to minus 2. And changing the signs on both sides or multiplying across by minus 1 gives me minus f is equal to positive 2. So the center of C1 is 4, 2. That's the center of my first circle. Now I'm going to find the radius of that circle. And the radius, again, given from my log tables, is the square root of f squared plus g squared minus c. We have the values of our f. It's minus 2. Make sure that goes in a bracket on our calculator just in case uh, we're using our calculator. The square must be to the minus as well. Our g then is minus 4 squared minus my c. My c is the constant, which is our positive 2, so minus 2. And working that out, I'm getting a radius of square root of 18. And the square root of 18 is 3 root 2. The same thing, or if you're going to decimals, because we have to draw it now in a minute, roughly uh, to one decimal place, 4.2 units. So that's our first circle. We carry out the same process again for circle two. So let's do that. So circle two, I'm running out of space here, but let's do it. Uh, so I have uh, 2gx is equal to the number in front of the x, which is minus 10. So minus 10x. I divide both sides by x. So 2g is equal to minus 10. Divide both sides by 2. g is equal to minus 5. And I want minus g, which is changing the signs on both sides, which is positive 5. I'm now going to find its corresponding minus f. So I have the coefficient now of the y this time. So I'm looking for this value here, the minus 6. So I have 2fy is equal to minus 6y. Dividing both sides by y leaves me with minus 2f is equal to minus 6. Divide across by 2, I get f as minus 3, and multiply across by minus 1, I get minus f as positive 3. So my center of C2 is 5, 3. Finding its radius now, it's the square root of f squared plus g squared minus c, which is leaving me with uh, minus 3 squared plus minus 5 squared minus 26. And when I evaluate that, I'm going to get the square root of 8. And the square root of 8 will simplify in third form to root 2. Going to a decimal, one decimal point, it's the same as 2.8 units. So now we need to plot our two circles, C1 and C2, on the Cartesian plane. So plotting C1 to begin with. It has a radius of 4, 2, which is around here. So that's the center of C1. It has a radius then of 4.2 units. So I'm going up slightly above 6. I'm going down to just 
minus 2.2 so that's two units plus two units brings me to minus two and then i'm going to the right four units which would bring me over to 8.2 and then i'm going to the left uh back four units and then slightly 0.2 so that's just to the left of the y-axis so that's the circle i need to now draw for c1 so i'm getting a circle that looks like that now I'm going to draw in my circle C2, which has a center of five, three, so over five units, up three, which is bringing me to about here. And it has a radius of 2.8, so I'm going up 2.8 units, which brings me to 5.8, which is about there. And I'm going down 2.8 units, which brings me just above the x-axis about here. So three take away 2.8 is 0.2. So I'm bringing it to about there. And then I'm going to the right, 2.8, which brings me to 7.8, which is about here. And then to the left, 2.8, which is about 2.2, isn't it? Okay, so I need to draw that circle now with my compass. And I have it looking like that. So there's our two circles, C1 and C2. Scrolling down to part two, it's asking us to prove mathematically that the circles are touching internally. So you can see here that from our sketch, we're looking at this region here that you can see that they are touching and that they're touching internally because C2, the red circle is inside the green one. That's what we basically just need to prove now mathematically. So in order to show that they're touching internally or externally, there's two possibilities. We can add their two radii, so radius one plus radius two of both circles. And if that's equal to the distance between the two centers, that's telling us that the circles are going to be touching externally. So if you add the two radius, and they equal the distance between the two centers, then they touch externally. It's asking us though to show that they touch internally. So to touch internally, it's the opposite. If we take away our two radius, and that's equal to the distance between the two centers, well then they're going to touch uh, internally. Now we have our two radius from up in part one. The only thing we need to do here now is to get the distance between our two centers. So that's what I'm gonna do first of all. I'm gonna get the distance between our two centers. So our two centers are C1, which has a center for two, and C2, which is has a center of five, three. Gonna label them then X1, Y1 x2 and y2. I'm then going to use my distance formula for my log tables, which is x2 minus x1 all to be squared, plus y2 minus y1 all to be squared, all in the square root. So that's going to find me the distance between the two radius. Filling in my formula now, I have 5 subtract 4 plus y2 subtract y1. Evaluating that out, I'm getting the square root of 1 squared plus uh, one squared, which is the distance between my two centers as the square root of two. So coming back over now to how I prove they touch internally. To prove they touch internally, we said we go radius one, subtract radius two, and we should get the distance between the two centers. So my first radius of C1 is three root two and I'm subtracting the radius of C2, and I found that to be two root two. And I now need to show, is that the same as my distance? And my distance is root two, we just found it down here. So working that out, three root two take away two root two is one root two, and one root two is equal to root two. And since I have both sides equal, therefore these two circles, C1 and C2, touch internally. And that is part two. Part B, the circle C has the following equation. Show that the line x plus y minus two equals zero cuts a chord of length eight root two units with the circle C. So basically what that's asking us to do. So if you just sketch it, first of all, we have a circle and that's our circle C. We then have a line which cuts through it. And that's our line x plus y minus two equals zero. It's then what we're going to do basically is 
because it's telling us it cuts the circle, we're actually going to find the coordinates of where that line cuts the circle. So we're going to find these two coordinates here. When we find those two coordinates where it intersects the circle, we're then going to get the distance between those two points using our distance formula. And that will hopefully come out as eight root two. And that's how we're going to show it's a chord. A chord is that segment of the line uh, from a point to a point on the circle. So that's basically what we have to do. So in order to find the two points where it intersects the circle, we're going to use our simultaneous equations. And to use our simultaneous equations, we're going to manipulate the line. So write it in terms of X or Y. So it doesn't matter actually here. So I'm just going to go X is equal to uh, minus Y plus two. So I'm moving over the Y and I'm moving over the minus two. I'm then going to substitute that in for X within the circle. So our circle is two X squared plus two Y squared minus 24 X plus 12 Y plus 25. And everywhere there is an X, I'm going to sub in my minus y plus two. Now it doesn't matter, you could have had it as y is equal to minus x plus two. So it doesn't matter which way you manipulate. So subbing in minus y plus two, and that's a squared, um, minus y plus two. So the point of this is that you've now written an equation in terms of y only. So I've gotten rid of the two variables x and y and I just have it in terms of one variable. So multiplying all this out, I have two and a square means you multiply it by itself. So plus two y squared. Let's multiply this one out now. Minus by minus is a plus 24y. Minus 24 by positive two is minus 48. Plus 12y plus 25 is equal to zero. Coming back and filling in my value here for x minus y plus two. So let's multiply that out. I'm going to keep that two outside the bracket first. So it's like it's a square bracket here. So now I'm going to multiply minus y by the second bracket and then the first term by the second bracket. And I'll close off my bracket. And that is going to give me, so again, I'll have all of this. So I'm just going to save a bit of room here. So all of this will fit in here. Multiplying that out, I get two bracket um y squared minus 2y minus 2y plus 4 and again i will be bringing this down again so multiplying that in or actually i can add the minus 2 and the minus 2 first so that's leaving me with 2 bracket y squared minus 4y plus 4 and i will then have my plus 2y squared plus 24y minus 48 plus 12y plus 25 equals zero. Multiplying it in now. So I get 2y and a minus eight minus, or sorry, 2y squared minus 8y plus eight plus my 2y squared plus 24y minus 48 plus 12y plus 25 equals to zero. Now I'm going to start grouping terms and adding them and subtracting them. So first of all, I'm going to start with the degrees of two. So the two y squared there and a two y squared there, that's giving me a four y squared. A degree of one, I have a minus eight y, a positive 24, which gives me 16 y and 16 and 12 will bring me to a positive 28 y. And then my constants, I have an eight, minus a 48, which brings me to 40, uh, minus 40 plus 25 then will bring me to a negative 15. So minus 15 equals to zero. Okay, so now you could either use your guide number or your minus B or your trial and error method here. Quite difficult to spot it when it's such a high value in front of the Y squared. I'm gonna use my guide number here. So I'm gonna multiply the value in front of the y squared by the constant, which is minus 15, which brings me to minus 60. And I'm now going to look for the factors of minus 60 that add to positive 28. So I'm going to use a positive 30 multiplied by a minus 2. So 30 multiplied by minus 2 is still minus 60, and 30 take away 2 is positive 28. So so now I'm going to rewrite my quadratic as 4y squared um, 
plus 30y minus 2y minus 15 equals to 0. I'm going to factorize the first two and take something out that's common. And all I can take out there that's common is a 2y. So I have 2y times 2y plus 15. And on the second two, I'm going to take out the negative 1 because I need to have the same in the bracket. So if I take out negative 1 times 2y plus 15, you can see here now that I have the same factors. So then putting the two together, I have 2y take 1 times 2y plus 15 is equal to 0. So there are my two factors. Now I have to find their roots. So solving for their roots, I'm going to have uh, 2y take 1 is equal to 0 and 2y plus 15 is equal to 0. So 2y is equal to positive 1, y is equal to 1 half. And then I have 2y is equal to negative 15, y is equal to negative 15 over 2, which again could be minus 7.5 if you prefer. So now we need to find the value of x. And that can be found by going back to the very start where we have x as minus y plus 2. And I need to do it out for both values of y. So summing in a positive a half for y and then subbing in uh, negative 15 over 2 for y. So just be careful there with the negatives. So that's a half and negative 15 over 2. And working both of those out, I get a corresponding value of x as x is equal to uh, 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Or I could have um, positive 15 over 2 plus 2, which is 19 over 2. So there are my two values for x. Now writing them as coordinates. So just moving them up, I have 3 over 2 corresponds to a half. And my second point that makes up the chord is 19 over 2, comma, minus 15 over 2. There's no problem working to decimals with this. So now I need to show that that is a chord of length 8 through 2. So I need to get the distance between those two coordinates. So using my distance formula as x2 minus x1 all to be squared plus y2 minus y1 all to be squared getting the distance between those two. Uh, labeling my points, x1, y1, x2, y2. And filling it in, I have the square root of uh, 19 over 2 minus 3 over 2, all to be squared, plus y2, which is minus 15 over 2, minus y1 which is a half all to be squared now i'm going to use my calculator here for this and hopefully it's going to come out as 8 root 2 uh, which it does and that's what they wanted us to show so that is us finished we've shown that the length of the chord is 8 root 2. so quite a long uh, question there there's a bit of work in that one let's just zoom out in case we need to see it all together but there's quite a uh, a lot of work in that one